In this video of getting started, we're gonna talk about scan tools. We'll talk about the basic setup, how to get connected, navigate some of the menus, and talk about some of the options I've got to pull codes and look at data. The first thing I'm gonna do is plug in my scan tool. I'm gonna to take this data link connector here, which happens to be the OBD2 standard shape and size. This has got 16 pins on it, and it will fit anything that's 1996 to present. So I gotta locate where this goes. OBD2 standards tell me that the data link connector's gotta be within a specific range close to the driver's seat. CARB specifics, so California Air Resource Board specifics, put that box even smaller to just under the steering column. Most manufacturers build it just in that place for vehicles sold all over the United States. Once I've got that located, I'm gonna plug in my data link connector, take care to push it in straight, make sure it goes in smooth and attaches. Once I do that, a lot of scan tools should illuminate an LED if they've got one on the cable, or I should see that my scan tool is powered up. With my scan tool plugged in and powered up, the next step is to power up the car. I need to turn on the modules that I wanna communicate with so that they can share data back and forth. Just like your phone, your laptop, any electronic device, we've gotta switch those modules on so that we can talk to them. In a vehicle, that means interacting with my ignition switch. So in this hybrid vehicle and a lot of modern vehicles, I'm just gonna push a button. And I wanna confirm that I'm in the on state. I wanna be in the on position of the ignition switch. I can generally see that in confirmation by the bulb test function that comes on after I get to that state. That's where the check engine light, the ABS light, any of those fault lights for modules will illuminate for about five seconds. I could have the car in the running state or have the engine on and idling, but it's not necessary for pulling codes and getting certain parts of data. If I wanted to do that, I do wanna be cautious that my exhaust is ventilated or I'm parked outside. I don't wanna run the car in a closed up shop. With the scan tool turned on, we can talk about some of the different menu selections that exist on this particular tool. It is worth mentioning that this structure is gonna change between tool manufacturers, but a lot of the general options are gonna remain very similar. Here in the middle, I've got OBD2 and EOBD. That's a selection that's gonna take me to the global OBD2 or generic communication platform and protocols on this tool. Just like we talked about in a previous video, that's a reliable way to get any kind of emissions data out of an OBD2 car, but it's likely to be somewhat limited. If I've got the ability to go to something like this where it says scanner, or sometimes more prominently, I have a screen like this where I've got all different manufacturers, that's often a better place to be. After hitting scanner, we're gonna to go to Chevrolet, pick our model year, we're gonna manually identify the car, and we're gonna tell it the model that we've got, which is a Volt. After that selection, I should get a choice for engine platforms. This is an important step to consider and make sure that I'm matching this RPO code or VIN code to my vehicle that I'm working on. Before I hit OK, I wanna make sure that these VIN codes match the vehicle that I'm working on. On this initial screen, I get a handful of options. The first of those is called code scan. This is gonna scan the entire vehicle for fault codes across every module. There are certain scenarios and diagnostics where that is useful that I wanna see the whole thing, but because that's gonna scan every single module, it's also gonna be quite a time investment. If I know I have a module of interest first, it's generally better to start there. We're gonna go down here and concentrate on engine first. So I touch engine, that's gonna take me to my engine control module. I get another list, another menu. First one is codes menu. That's gonna give me some options to deal with fault codes. The next one is clear codes. I can look at data, I can do some tests, and I can go to generic functions. We're gonna start by going to code menu. I've got other options here. We wanna display codes and see what's in this module. It's pretty common that I'm gonna get another list like this. DTC display is just gonna show me everything that's stored in that module. So once I go there, I get a whole list of those different codes. Oftentimes I can select those and sometimes I'll get other data. This specific tool, if we had it enabled, has a function called SureTrack that would provide me extra information via the internet and a service to learn about what that code is, what its enabling criteria might be, when does it get flagged, all those things. The other options on this menu help me identify when things have occurred or have not occurred and are again useful in diagnostics. Freeze frame data is part of OBD2's standardization 
and it's the capturing of data that occurred at the time of a fault code's trigger. So any of these codes, if I was to click on one of them, the free stream data shows me the screen that has lots of different PIDs and information pieces that were captured at the time of the fault code event. So when that code got triggered, we took a snapshot. What's the car doing at that time? So all sorts of things from mileage to how long since I've cleared a code, the engine speed, the temperature values, all of these items. These are really useful so that a technician can verify the concern and go through it and try to reenact what's happening. The next thing that I've got on this screen is clear codes. Clear codes is gonna help me erase fault codes that are in the car. It's important to mention that when I clear codes, I do lose other data. I'm gonna lose not only my fault codes, but I'm gonna lose often fuel trim data and certain adaptations, depending on how they're stored within the vehicle. I wanna use caution when I do that because it also takes away my freeze frame data. And so if I haven't spent time to look at those things, I could lose some valuable information just by clearing codes and seeing what comes back. Third thing on my list is data display. When I go to data display, it's gonna show me lots of different categories. Most manufacturers put PIDs and data information into categories based on your interest. So if I wanna learn about what the oxygen sensors are doing or fuel trim, we're grouping specific sensors that are most relevant to that type of diagnostic work. If we just go to data for the engine, I get a list of lots of different values that pertain to the engine, like engine speed, temperatures, all sorts of things. Because this is a hybrid, we're not idling right now, you can see our engine speed is zero. But we can see that the engine's coolant temperature is about ambient, it's about 75 degrees in this room, and the under hood temperatures are a little bit higher, likely because of the inverter operation, uh, other things that are happening within this car. The next thing down on our list is functional tests. Functional tests is a list of different ways that I can interact with the module and the vehicle to either control its outputs or run through a specific process to test a sequence or perform a mechanical test. Because this is a hybrid, one challenge that we have is doing a compression test, being able to crank the car with the fuel and ignition disabled in order to capture the compression of the engine. This is solved on most hybrids through a scan tool function like this. I hit compression test, it helps me to eliminate ignition and fuel. It may even hold the throttle wide open for me, and it's gonna help me just crank it on demand so I can conduct that test. Lots of other things exist in this menu structure like output controls, where I can go in and I can tell it, turn on the cooling fan, turn on the fuel pump, do different outputs to verify that the transistor and control of that PCM has the ability to operate the component. The last thing that's on my list is generic functions. That menu, is often part of most scan tools, although the title and naming might be slightly different, but it's going to take me to that global OBD2 type structure that we saw at the very beginning. Just another way to get there. This menu puts all of my global OBD2 and generic OBD2 data into its native type of form. And so it's gonna list my modes with the hexadecimal value and structure it in a way that I'm probably familiar with and is consistent car to car. This can be useful if maybe I don't understand some of the PID values and how data gets displayed by different manufacturers. Coming here can help me with that process because it generally gets standardized and presented the same way. That's our video for setting up and going through the basics of a scan tool. Hopefully this helps get you started to make connections, begin pulling codes and looking at data.